Did you know that I'm going to go to hell for a picnic table? Well, not not the whole table, just the, the metal frame, the rusty frame. Uh, you know, you would think if you have two grandmas, out of two grandmas, you might have one good one. <laughs> Yeah, but both mine were shit bags. Uh, just complete nutcases that, I don't know, abused kids, didn't protect kids, abused the kids after they were grown up. <laughs> yeah. Picked and chose who they would target for their vile, toxic, poisonous uh, personalities. So, yeah, it's been a real shit show uh, in the relative department for me and many other departments. So you would hope and think that grandmas would be, like, loving, caring people, but no, not these two bitches. Complete, absolute nutcases that never got even one minute of any kind of uh, psychiatric treatment or at all. They never had to sit down and be told your behavior is absurd, out of line, and you're wrong. They just lived in a little bubble where they had you know a handful of people and no one really said much. Not too much, and they just carried on with their toxic personalities. So, anyways, uh, this bitch, uh, Bernie Altman Zogerman, the old man's mom, she's the one that uh, told me uh, I'm in trouble with God because of a rusty picnic table frame. <laughs> so here's how the story went. So my mom divorced the old man after about 15 years of being married. His behavior in that 15 years was criminal, horrendous, dangerous, idiotic, just all the bullshit out with his drinking buddies coming home drunk passing out all over the place fits of anger breaking windows threw my cat through the window um, flipped over the kitchen table with all the food on it hateful jealous uh, a baby boomer you know Born in 52. Well, they got divorced in 1987. So I'm going to do a little math here. And I don't like math. But, uh, so he would have been about 35 years old when they got divorced. And he had 30 days to get whatever he wanted and, and move out. It was not a divorce in the sense like you hear a lot of them where the guy's worried uh, the woman's going to steal all my stuff. i got to hide it at the buddy's house, fight it in court. We're going to have a, he, The old man never set foot in a courtroom. He, there, he, there was no... Um, legal battle over anything. I've got a video on here somewhere where I put, I showed the divorce papers. If you, I don't know what the title is, but anyways, um, you can look for that if you want. He was supposed to pay fifty dollars a week child support, and if I went to college, he was supposed to pay for that, and he took. Uh, the china cabinet, which he sold, I think, to his sister for, I think, $1,400. Uh, 
there was some kind of a chest, uh, an antique chest. I think he sold that for a few hundred bucks to her. Uh, he took a commercial meat saw that he sold for $1,000. He he basically took everything of value, anything that had any dollar amount. We didn't have valuable stuff. They each had a vehicle. And the stuff, I mean, in the house, it's like the whole house was like there was nothing of value except the things he took. <laughs> There was a picnic table, which you see here in this picture. This is the actual picnic table. This picture was taken back in uh, the 70s or the early 80s. That's why these pictures all look foggy and cloudy because, uh, you know, nobody knew how to set the camera for the film. You just and and some of these pictures look a little warped that's because i set the picture up it's a paper picture i set it up and then i took a picture of it with a digital camera and the the heat from the the light was causing the the picture to bow a little bit you can see under the picnic table there's a snapping turtle here a little snapping turtle uh yeah there was a lot of the old man was into that stupid turtle hunting bullshit Anyways, uh, so we always had snapping turtles around in the summer. Uh, that's a whole nother story I'll talk about. Anyways, that's our backyard, and that's the picnic table. It's a it's a metal frame that's welded together. And he, he had this in, I don't know where he got it, but it was here since the early 70s. So this, this picnic table frame is decades old decades old okay i can't believe he didn't just come and get it but for some reason or another it's it stayed here i guess because he couldn't sell it he he moved into a little house they rented over in uh, davis county indiana and uh, he would hang out at other people's houses and get drunk he didn't go to the bars as much. He still went to bars and got drunk a little bit here and there. But he didn't really have a place of his own to have people come over and hang out and get drunk. That's what the picnic table's for, for an alcoholic. Picnic tables are places where it's like, okay, we're not going to go to the bar. We're going to go to somebody's house. We'll sit on the tables and get drunk like we're at the bar. That's what a picnic table's for. He didn't have a home, a house. He he was renting a little house. They had a little shed, park your truck in. So he didn't really need it, and it wasn't something he could turn around and sell, like the china cabinet, the chest, the meat saw. It wasn't of monetary value, you see. Um... A few years or so after the divorce, if I remember right, he started kind of hitting me up about, uh, I need a picnic table. Well, what he did is on his property, he had a, a shed built and then later a garage. And it became kind of the hangout place for the drinking buddies. And he wanted he started wanting to have a picnic table. So... When he was 35 and they got divorced, he would go to Bernie's house and boo-hoo about money, this, and I'm getting screwed in the divorce. He wasn't getting screwed in the divorce. Ask any guy who got divorced if $50 a week child support is getting screwed. <laughs> and then he ducked out of doing that. He even he got, he bust in the door one day like, Jim, come in, I ain't paying that anymore. Threw a fit. Over the next few years after the divorce, he would come to the, our house where me and my mom lived, barge through the door, and start grabbing stuff. Like, this is mine, this is mine. He, so he would go to Bernie's house and Jasper and boo-hoo and cry to her to try to get money. And she, with her toxic, poisonous personality, would spit and fuss and guff at him about... Don't let her take all that stuff. You go. So he'd come in and like, those forks are mine and that microwave. <laughs> so he took a microwave 
off the kitchen countertop. And the microwave that he took, it was a Christmas gift from my mom's mom to my mom. Edna, my mom's mom, gave my mom the microwave for Christmas a, a few years before. And the old man barges in and takes it. And my mom said, that was a Christmas present from my mom. And he take, and he had it in his house for years. He might still be using it. I don't know. And he grabbed forks and the steak knives. And he'd just barge in and take stuff. This was years after. Years after the divorce. He had, there was nothing here. It wasn't like we had a warehouse full of stuff. He had 30 days to take whatever he wanted. But he boohooed to his uh, scumbag mom, Bernie, trying to get money from her. This is a 35-year-old guy, no health problems. Big, tough working man. But he had to go cry to mommy because he was getting divorced. And he used that as an excuse. Well, I need money, mommy. Money for what? He, he's a big, bad working man, right? When he get a paycheck on Friday? And this guy, after the divorce, I seen him more drunk and passed out after the divorce than I did before it, and before it was bad enough. After the divorce, he declared he'd quit drinking. That lasted about, I think, three days. And then he went on a years-long drunk spree. <laughs> I mean, this guy's a piece of work and a piece of shit. And then he would blow up at me. He was mad about the divorce, like he's a victim. And he would take his anger out on me. I was like 15, 16, 17, 20 years old. Where he'd, and he'd blow up at me. I didn't hear about the picnic table for a while. Some years went by. So he got a a garage he built. Oh, he, he ducked out of the uh, 50 a week child support and then he sent paying for anything with me with school. He ducked out all that in a fit of anger. And he, he said the reason why he didn't have to pay it is because I was working full time. I was 15, 16 years old working full time. And he used that as an excuse why he legally did not have to pay child support. So, years go by. He gets a, he moves a trailer on his property. He's got a garage. He didn't pay the child support, but he, he built a garage. He built a house later, around 2000, 2000, 2001. He built a lake that I think cost about $10,000. And then he bought a $7,000 lawnmower that he didn't need. But he didn't have money to pay the child support. Deadbeat dad. He bought all this shit, all this stuff, but he couldn't help pay for his child. One child. He had one damn child his whole life that we know of. The way he screwed around, who knows? There might be other kids. We don't know. Because he was a screw around piece of shit. Besides being a drunk, abusive piece of shit filled with hate and jealousy towards me. So anyways, years later, he was still going to his mom, Bernie, boo-hoo about this picnic table. Crying that I still had this picnic table frame, just the frame. The boards were like, Fell, weren't on it anymore, fell off, rotten, whatever. He was 35 when they got divorced, and then shortly after he was boo-hoo about the picnic table, 
and I I stood up to him and I I no I'm gonna I want to keep it. Okay. He was 35 when he was 50 years old. That many years later. He was around 50, give or take a, a year or two here and there. His mom, Bernie, calls me up one night in, in this spitting, hissing, guffing mood, this toxic bitch. And she says, uh, give him that picnic table. I'm like, what? That's his? And I said, I said, no, I, I, I'm going to keep it. And she started in on me about how she said, you, you never respected him. You, you, uh, you always call him the old man. You don't call him father. You call him the old man. (laughs) And then I pointed out, I brought up the time he threw Willie, the cat, through the kitchen window, which I have video of that. Not not the act, but the story. I brought that up, trying to get this dumb bitch to see that her son is a turd. And then she tells me that was my fault. I was like five or, five or six years old when he did this. She tells me that was your fault. And I'm like, my fault? Yeah. Because you wanted to put chocolate powder in the cat's milk. I'm like, what? I don't remember that. I asked my mom later about it. And she said, no, it, he was just sitting there and the cat, he was holding the cat and it scratched him. And he threw the cat through the window. It had nothing to do with any chocolate powder and any milk or anything. So this bitch, Bernie, comes at me with this crap and tells me this is my fault that he threw a cat through a window, which ran off and never came back. Imagine that. Imagine you're in your house with your mom and your dad, and she was there. Bernie was there when this happened. She was in the room. She was a few feet away when it happened. And she still tells me it was my fault when I was a little five, six-year-old kid that I made him do this. I made him throw the cat through the window. Imagine you're, for people who had a sensible family life, I guess, imagine you have a pet, and one day your dad just flies into a rage and throws the pet through the window. And the pet hits the concrete below and runs off and 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 that's it you know people should be in jail for this somebody should have called the cops and said hey a guy just threw a cat through the window in front of a small child that would have been you know i don't know what list of uh crimes that would be but you know jail time among the other 50 things he did that were unethical and illegal around a child to a child or to animals or whatever putting a child at risk with his drunk driving and and so on physical assault and so on so this bitch Bernie tells me this is my fault and she says to me you know that's just hatred in your heart That's all that is. You just got hatred in your heart. And you know what? Jesus is going to deal with you. Jesus is going to deal with you. (laughs) This bitch, this insane bitch, who is a child abuser her own self and an animal abuser, tells me she brings up Jesus this you know all these bitches that are toxic 
the venomous bitches. It seems like they're all got Jesus. Yeah, they they're using Jesus as a weapon. So I I wish I had not been caught off guard by her phone call and I should have brought it up to her later and then like been prepared but then, uh, so I, it's like, well, I'm, I'm going up against a brick wall of stupidity here and corruption with this bitch. I'm going nowhere that you can't convince I me. Mean, she was in the room when he threw the cat through the window. I don't know what more proof do you need? I guess, I guess if he raped somebody and stabbed them to death and she was in the room, she'd just deny that too. I don't know how that works. And I don't, I don't know how crazy people who live in denial, I don't know how that works. I can't explain the wiring in that in that screwed up brain. And then she's like, well, I'm letting you go. And it sounded like, like I'm letting you go, like, that's it, we're done <laughs> in life. But I'd seen her a, a bunch of times after that, but I did avoid her for about the last probably eight years of that bitch's life i did avoid her i i did go around her and she was at the old man's when i was there sometimes but uh yeah just what a what a sack of shit what a fucking sack of shit nutcase son of a bitch but anyways there you go that picnic table you're looking at which I still have. I still have that table. It's got different boards on it. But that table is sitting out right off the back porch right now, which is where it was mostly when I was a kid, in pretty much the same spot. And But I'm going to hell for that picnic table because I didn't give that picnic table frame to this drunken shitbag, Dennis Zogelman, according to Bernie Zogelman. So I got that to look forward to. I'll be in hell with my picnic table. <laughs> oh man, these crazy piece of shit bitches. Where do they come from?